Louisiana roads are more dangerous than they've been in years, according to data from the Louisiana Highway Safety Commission. Part of that problem is drunk driving. In fact, the commission estimates last year drunk or impaired driving killed 400 people and injured more than 4,000. It's a frustrating problem because every one of those crashes may have been prevented with a different decision. As you'll see in this original WAFB documentary, the choice to drive drunk or not can have a lasting impact. Interstate is a totally different beast. We were working a crash on I-10 eastbound over college. So we're standing out in the car, we're watching things, and then all of a sudden, I hear a car. During training, they always tell you don't drop your guard. Be aware. I turn and I see the car coming sideways. White car. Briefly made eye contact with the driver. I rolled over and looked at the clock. It was a little past three o'clock, I think. I heard a knock at the door. They said, Jason's been in an accident. We need to go to the hospital right now. As soon as I saw his face, um, they brought me a chair. I still didn't even know how bad the wound was. That week's a bit fuzzy in the ICU. Uh, I had multiple surgeries, probably a few feet, and it would have gone much worse. I'm Jason Martin, Baton Rouge Police Department Sergeant. Silver Kia. In 2007, I transferred into DWI Task Force. The number of people I've put taken off the road before they could hurt somebody or themselves, I don't even know what the number is, but I know I've made a difference in somebody's life. Being married to a police officer is stressful sometimes lonely, but also very fulfilling. We was standing behind my unit, waiting for Roadrunner to come get the last car off the interstate. I was told by body camera footage that Jason was against the wall, and he was out of the, out of the way. And he seen the car coming, and I didn't and he ran back in front of the car to push me out the way. I tried to jump the car, and it hit me and Jason. My name is Joseph Caroni. I'm, I'm an officer with the Baton Rouge Police Department. I've done just about every job you could possibly think of. And I was currently cutting trees before I decided to start working with the Baton Rouge Police Department. And I've currently been with them for four years now. Spent, I think, five days in ICU. And it was one or two or three days after I got out of ICU that I actually remembered coming to, like, I'm in hospital. My right toe got torn off. Several fractures in the ankle. Severe deep tissue damage. I had a torn meniscus in my knee. I torn labrum in my shoulder. Fractured my forehead. Cracked my forehead and I had some stitches. Fractured the uh, eye socket, nasal cavity, and my jaw. And I think that's it. I think. During training, they always tell you don't drop your guard. Be aware. I didn't drop my guard. And when I did, that's what happened. Well, I took off as fast as I could, and then he hit me, uh, spun me around, and then I crumpled to the ground. I rolled over and was able to look at my leg and knew it wasn't good. One of the hardest things that I had to deal with, that sorry, why, why did he have to lose his leg? Why couldn't it have been me? Uh, why did he risk his life to save mine? JoJo was there, I pushed him. Whether I saved his life or caused him to lose his toe, we'll never know. But it happened. He was right there. The car was coming. That's it. If I lost a foot, if I lost whatever, it was okay. Uh, because I was still here. 
I, you know, I have my three children. Uh, I wanted to see them. I want to see them grow up. I don't want to be, you know, dead. That was all I cared about, and that was all she cared about, and that got us through it. We have never once been concerned about it, uh, especially me. My faith in God, our faith in God, has helped us tremendously through this. All right, so we're gonna get this in under six minutes. We're gonna try. Let's do it. You got it. <laughs> uh, I know. <laughs> this is where change starts to happen, though. <laughs> Most slowest hundred meters of your leg. You tired? It's a good. It's a good place to be at. Means we push you past, past your okay point. The craziness of this story has written itself. I'm the DWI cop that got hit by a DWI. Ironic. All the way, straight in his arms. <laughs> You're good. It's okay. Too much. That's what he's done for so many years, and then to be even like physically hit by a drunk driver, not even in his car, but physically hit by a drunk driver is frustrating because of all the hard work that he's put into that job. Three goals. Two, I have two daughters. I want to walk them down the aisle one day. Uh, I want to play baseball or soccer in the backyard with the kids. And I want to go back to work. And those three things drive me every day to keep going. One day cut my grass again, which I can't wait to do. Come on, Audrey. Good job. Follow it. I mean, the whole of the crash has impacted our whole family in that things have just changed for us. She got a piece of it. My husband lost a leg and that just sounds crazy to say. Like I said, I, every once in a while I just stop and think, how is this our life? When, how could this happen? Good job, Audrey. More often it's just, okay, what do we do next? And how do we face this next challenge? Where do we go from here? and just looking forward to new things and different things. Three, two, one, go. I won. The, the kids have handled things really well. I'm just walking because they already started the race. It was much easier to explain things to them after they saw him and realized that he was okay and he might look a little different, but he was still the same dad. He was still the same Jason. We had a project in class, and it was a memoir. And it was what was a, an event in your life that you learned a lesson. And I titled it The Day My Dad Became a Hero. August 21st, 2021, a day that will live in my mind with absolute worry. It was nine days before my birthday. I woke up on a bright Saturday morning. Birds were chirping, the sun was shining. Everything seemed to be perfect until it wasn't. Little did me and my family know we were about to hear the worst news of our lives. My mom said that if he and the other officer who got hurt had been a few feet any other way, neither of them would be here today. My dad pushed him out of the way knowing he was risking his life. He still did it anyway. When you put into that stressful situation or something that's required for whoever's on scene with you to, uh, do their job and to make sure you go home safely, you, then you really know who that person is in their heart, not just that person. And I'd do the same thing for him. But I, I dealt with that for quite a while. There was numerous times me and my wife sat and cried for hours. And it's been tough. I went and looked at the pictures and I was like, holy moly. It was bad. Jojo was so bad. I know. Was the arch of your foot sore? I don't feel no different soreness from the other day as I do every day. I'm not going back till I'm running because I run a lot on the job and I don't want me not to be able to 100% physically do what I need to do safely. Go. 
get it done as quickly as you can. It's gonna take forever to knock down that first calorie. Sometimes with patients, just to get him working a couple different muscle groups, get his heart rate up. Heart rate hasn't been up for a while, so he's lost conditioning. We need to make sure we get that conditioning part of it, as, long, as well as motion. Because if I have anything that's hindering me to do my job 100%, my fellow officer's safety, not gonna jeopardize their safety because of my disability. My job is to get him to go back to work. His job is to get him to go back to work. So for him, going back to work means being able to literally do anything. He needs to run, jump, sprint, climb, crawl, like all those things. I just want to walk. <laughs> You're going to be there soon. Oh, yeah. Get all the way up, extend those hips forward. There. Right now, in the short term, I'm looking forward to starting the prosthetic process. I'm eager to return to work and to the to the people who are my other family. Good job. <sighs> Thank you. And I'm just uh, changing all of the alignment screws to get it, what do you call it, bench adjusted. There's a parameter that you want to have a limb in before you even go into the room. A little nervous, not knowing what to expect. Kind of guesstimated on my cutting, so we may have to shorten it a little bit more. But what we want to do is just roll that all the way up. And uh, let's go ahead, so we'll just stand up. I'm readjusting my mm -hmm. alignment line here. It's a pretty good start to the fit. Um, got a little space down here. We always have a little bit, but we're going to clean that up. So, do you have any questions? No, you mind if I stand one more time before you take it off? You do whatever you want. <laughs> it's yours. I just want to stand. I don't have to walk. I'm trying not to push myself. <laughs> That's just, all right. It's nice so, to stand. No, this is the place to do it. You it's something it different. Place. I've got to get used to it, but it's, it was exciting to stand up and not have these. Feeling like it's another step closer. All right. I just realized you probably got a. Oh, that's nice looking. Yeah. There you go. You probably got to put this strap back on this thing oh, yep. before I put it on, huh? Yep. That's much easier. I'm nervous. <laughs> <laughs> now, are you coming over every day to help me put this thing on? <laughs> nope. <laughs> Come on up. It's gonna be a little long until we get you in there. Okay, let's make thigh back. Doing the parameters for the for your knee center to floor to foot to pylon. All of those things are um, used for the computer with four sensors and strain gauges and an accelerometer. Um, all puts all that together with your weight and your um, moving forward, and that's what dictates how it's gonna hold the knee in the hydraulics. Let's go ahead and stand back up. So you tighten your, your back muscles here, thigh back, and then you step up. Thigh back, tighten the extensors, thigh forward. Good. Okay, let's go back. Okay, let's go ahead and have a seat and we'll have a look. Small steps. It's been a long road and we, we've got a long way to go, but uh, we're getting there. There's really no schedule for this, uh, is what I've come to realize. You know, what I had in mind is probably not going to happen. Uh, I was hoping to be back at work sometime in March or April, and I, I know that's not going to happen. Just walk the best you can, and if, you're, if, it, if the knee sticks, it's okay, just keep on going. I feel very honored, like walk, watching your kids walk for the first time. Uh, over and over again, it never gets old. So it's going on a little over 25 years. It'll get me choked up. <laughs> Sorry. 18, 18 and 5 eighths. Just do it. I mean, we're close. Getting the person functional and happy and comfortable and living their life, that's where our, I really believe that's where our job okay. comes in. Let's see what we got. We're getting through the downs and we're getting through the ups and hopefully we can just get to a nice static line at some point and just keep pushing forward because that, that is the ultimate goal is just to get back to normal. 
that's the part getting your life back, getting getting to do the things with your family and your kids, and and um, just getting back to living and not living life because of this. You know, moving past it. All the boxes are checked for me today. We can go ahead and let's pull it off. It's definitely going to be a much happier Christmas. You know, uh, you know the song. All I want is. Christmas for my two front teeth, well, you know, I got a leg now. All I wanted for Christmas was a leg and I got it. Having one leg doesn't mean I shouldn't. <laughs> I have two legs now. I'm sorry, you have two legs. Because <laughs> Jay gave you an awesome leg. That's right. Who do you like to listen to? We've been through this country. Country? Yeah. Echo, play Luke Bryan radio. I said country. Okay, well, who's country? <laughs> Five more seconds. Twenty throws and then you can rest. We got one more round. Here. Hey, what's up? That's fourteen. Oh no! Ah, felt that one. Well, you should And the clock. Good. Um. I wasn't sure how that was going to go, but it was kind of perfect. I surprise you every time, don't I? You do. I get lower, get them thighs straight, parallel to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> you got decent squat form, did you? This is where I decompress. You come out here. I can't tell you how many times I've been up down this river my entire life. And you look at something, and you're going to see something different every time you come out here. There's so many doctor appointments of physical therapy, and for about four months, I wasn't even able to get in my boat due to if I got my foot wet with the injuries I had on my foot, it could have caused for amputation. This muddy water, you almost got to hit them on top of the head. Yeah, I can't do it too long. Maybe an hour and then I got to sit down and take my shoe off. And, uh, because I still have a lot of, a lot of, uh, pains in the bottom of my foot. Still to this day goes through my head is why well, couldn't it have been my leg instead of Jason Martin's leg, you know? Uh, so, I don't know. I, it, it's it's just a day-to-day day -day battle. He's a warrior, a heart big as a basketball. There's no quitting that man. That's driven me, you know, to be a, a better person. Uh, look at look at life differently. Stop what you're doing. We have a heal patient in the house today. <laughs> God wouldn't have been had his hands on us that day. Neither one of us be here. And we're here for a reason. Congratulations. All right, guys. <laughs> and what that reason might be, I don't know yet. May or maybe never know. Changing that one person's life, you know. If that's the reason that I'm here. We're bonded for life over this. So before I was his supervisor, uh, he worked for me. It's a lot more than that now, uh, for sure. There's no way we would ever go back to that simple relationship. Uh, I think we have each other now forever. Look at that. I was a good crawfish. You know, having that shared experience. I wish we didn't have it, but you know, we have it. And so I think that's a bond that's never going anywhere. Jason always messed with me. I'm gonna be back to work before you, and I'm missing a leg. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> uh, but I, I've never looked at it as a competition. We joke around a lot, but we also have some serious time during there, and we just talk. Talking helps a lot. And then I just found out last week that I got a 
my number my number five desk in my back is leaking. All we have to do is pick up the phone and call one another and or wait till therapy and talk after or during. Something's gonna kill us. I'm just glad it wasn't a drunk driver. This time. Hopefully there won't be no other this time. The accident occurred on my mom's birthday. So she's got that for the rest of her life. The amputation occurred on my grandmother's birthday. It's that ripple effect that friends, family, they're all impacted by this. You know, it's not just the person that's hit that's affected. There's so many more people that all of it could have been avoided if a simple decision had been made to not do it. How do you feel about the suspected drunk driver? He did what he did. He made his mistake. I don't, I, I don't have any ill will towards him. I don't have any hate. I hope he gets the treatment that he needs. He made a poor decision that night, 100%. It was his decision to make. Uh, I hope that he doesn't do it again in the future. I hope that somebody else maybe hears this story and realizes that it's not the thing to do. And maybe they don't drive drunk. Uh, because like I've said from the beginning, it's 100% a decision that a person makes to drive drunk. I hope that he is able to put this past him to improve his life, that he's able to move on, that he's able to become a productive member of society if he's not now. He's gonna have to pay a price or pay a penalty for what he did, I hope. Uh, there should be some something for it, but I don't want it to define him to ruin the rest of his life. Hopefully, if we have a few people that maybe see this and realize maybe I shouldn't drive drunk, then we've won something. So up the steps? Mm -hmm. Am I ditching this when I get there? Yeah. Okay. Our zero-g um, system is a um, gait and balance system. It's designed to give the therapist and the patient peace of mind um, by preventing and um, protecting the patient against falls that can cause injury, but it also allows us to um, utilize a body weight support system to decrease the amount of weight that they're responsible for um, so that they can walk and stand and do a lot of the things they need to do um, a lot easier. <laughs> the hardest thing, trusting that the prosthetic is gonna be there, even though I know it's gonna be there. <laughs> Putting my faith in that, that I can't, I can feel, but I can't feel that it will be there and it will do what it's supposed to do and that I have, and I'm trusting it to do it. So it's all mental. <sighs> Still shooting, it was March before, now I'm shooting May, June, just to get back. <sighs> I actually met a uh, San Marcos, uh, Texas police officer this weekend. She, in 2019, she was clearing debris on the interstate and she got hit by a drunk driver and lost her leg. So we had a lot to talk about. Pretty interesting that there's more than one. <laughs> we texted this morning about some stuff. Just, you know, it's, it really is amazing to, to find somebody else with a similar, similar thing, you know, and to talk about it because not many people can talk about it. So, you know, it's very, very interesting, very good to find her and talk to her for sure. Being home has given me so much more than I could have ever thought. Uh, being able to spend so much time with the family that I didn't take before because I like to work. And uh, made me realize I don't have to work near as much and spend that time with them. Just nice being home, getting my son up in the morning, getting him ready for school, taking him to school being home when they get home, being able to cook and cook dinner and have it ready when they get home. It's made me slow down quite a lot. Uh, slow down and enjoy what I have. Slow down and enjoy the, the time that I have with my family. Appreciate what I have with them. Uh, and just enjoy things in general. Uh, you know, I like to work, so I was always at work. And now I'm not, and it's nice. What was it like cutting your grass for the first time? <laughs> It was glorious. Uh, I, just being able to get on the lawnmower and ride and cut. Uh, now it, it's horrible, it's hot. I, I'm done with it already. But just to be able to do it for that first time, it, it was nice. All right, my friend. How are you Good doing? Good to see you. you this too. is the day we've been waiting for, huh? We hope. This but, is the bionic one, huh? Yeah, it's something. It's, what have you tried to do with it? Uh, we're starting the running process. Really? Which is interesting. Next week, uh, functional capacity evaluation to 
show that I can go back to work, and if all goes well, then the following Monday or Tuesday, hopefully, back to it. Four. That's six. Um, <laughs> not a good counter, I told you. Yeah. It's been a long eight and a half months at this point, and I have enjoyed it, but I'm also ready to get back to a normalcy uh, of, of work and coming home and doing the things that, that, that you do after work. You know, going and putting it forth that work. And I've been working. Believe me, the physical therapy is four times a week is a lot. And so I know I'm going to continue to be doing that for a while still. Active motion, it should help eliminate the pain. So at home, you're going to essentially do it. Ah, oh. What happened? Mm. <laughs> it's that pain right through there. Along the way, there have been doubts, 100%. You know, am I going to be able to do this? Can I get this done? Yeah, it can be done, but it takes some work, and it's not going to go as fast as I thought it was going to go. Come on, friend. That was a very humbling part of it. But I'm ready to also be back amongst the people I work with, you know, on a regular basis. Uh, I love my family. I do. And I wish I could stay home with them all the time, but I think we all need that healthy uh, work environment. Perhaps maybe you do have a full thickness rotator cuff tear that we can address, but that's not the case right now. Okay. I like it. So we can release per FCE. I like it. Oh, man, I'm so proud of you. You're a triumph of the human spirit. I appreciate it. I appreciate so everything. You should be very proud. You have no idea what you can do until you have to do it. I'd have never thought that I'd have lost a leg or a limb or anything like that and I'd have had to do it. But I'm doing it. And no matter what happens, you can do it. You just have to have that perseverance and that desire to want to do it. And as long as you have that, you can do anything you want to do. And it's going to define me a little bit. I'm always going to have a prosthetic leg. Uh, which is nothing, you know, it's, it's a leg, it's a metal leg, okay? I'm still gonna walk, I'm still gonna be able to do my job. Will it define me? I'm sure. It was meant to be, you know, God doesn't give us anything that we can't handle. And I guess he figured I could handle this. <laughs>